Hey everyone, Merry Christmas! I didn't really have anything special for this day, unfortunately. Like, I was gonna do another randomness with PK Gam series, like Christmas randomness with PK Gam or something like that, but I didn't really have enough to put in a video, so to speak, like to make enough footage for a randomness video. Uh, I was kind of busy with things, and that's kind of my fault. You can you can read my blog post on that. Uh, I I think I'll put the link to that to the blog post in the description down below there. When it comes to videos like that, I'd prefer like to have more of a quality product, so to speak, than to just throw something out there. So instead, I'm going to do something a little differently. Uh, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. We, I don't know when that started, actually. In fact, I asked this Christmas Eve, out of curiosity, where did this tradition start, and no one could really pinpoint it. So we don't really know why, but we just do it on Christmas Eve. So I got all my gifts for uh, Christmas on Christmas Eve the day before. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing them off. I've got a this small pile of gifts off to my side over here, yep. And I guess I should start. Well, this shirt that I'm wearing right now, this two-tone blue shirt, it's got like this tone of blue and this tone of blue up here. I got two kinds like that. One's a blue one, one's a brown one like this. I hope the camera's picking this up. I got the screen pointing at a weird angle. I don't know, maybe once I edit it in the end. Uh, lighten it up, you'll be able to see it better. But I got a, the blue one, then I got a brown one, like the one I just showed over there. And this is a shirt that you'll probably be interested in. This one's pretty cool. Sonic Face! Woo! Yeah, it's a big old uh, royal blue Sonic Face shirt. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, the, uh, uh, the shirts like this got really, really soft fabric. It's pretty nice. Uh, as well. Uh, the uh, Another thing that I got is, this is from my mom, because she knows I love fish, betas of the world. I especially love betas. It's a very large poster. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Well, I shouldn't say it's a very large poster. It's a poster in general. The reason why I say it's large is because I already got my walls filled up with a bunch of other posters, so I would, I would have to like shuffle them around to fit this one in. Um, I also got some media sticks. There's four of these. What these things are is that you basically you hang stuff on them like that. You put you nail these or screw them to the wall or something. I haven't opened them just yet. And then you can put like CDs, games, uh, even cartridges just stuck right into these slots here onto the walls. It's basically a space saver thing, which is pretty dang cool. Um, Next thing, uh, I should probably just get to the games right away. Uh, that's probably what you're waiting for. So I'm going to start with the games that I already opened and played a little bit. The first thing that I got over here is Poke Park Wii. It's a pretty good game. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty short, though, because I, I've only played it for about two hours, and uh, I got like 50-some friends out of 190-something, and five out of... I think it's 11 prism pieces or something like that that I have to collect along the way as well. Uh, someone's going to ask me, do a walkthrough on this! Well, I actually just might. Uh, it's something that I consider because I looked on YouTube for like video footage on how this game is and stuff like that. Like Before I, I pick up a game I or ask for a game, I always look up stuff on it, and some of that is like video walkthroughs and stuff like that. And as far as I can tell, there is like only one or two completed English walkthroughs on this game. It's actually pretty good. You play as Pikachu, you can actually battle other Pokemon in real time, not turn-based, which is something that's pretty much never, ever happened in a Pokemon game. It's always been turn-based in some way or form, like in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, you could just walk around. It seems like it's in real time, but it's actually turn-based. Um, uh, well, I guess you could say the Ranger series is re in real time because you're circling the Pokemon, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's not like a real Pokemon battle. Well, this one, you can, you're can you playing as Pikachu and you can battle other Pokemon. Um, you have to collect Prism pieces for some reason that I already forgot, actually. Uh, I would have to uh, look into that again. Uh, the next one is 
Sonic Colors for the DS. I've already played like an hour of this. Uh, it's If you ever played Sonic Rush or Sonic Rush Adventure, it's basically this. So it's a good game. That's all I can say about it, really. It's, it's a classic Sonic game, so to speak, which is a good thing. No gimmicks, by the way, like uh, Sonic Unleashed or something like that. Oof, hated the Werehog. Um, the next one, this one I didn't even open yet. Pokemon Ranger, Guardian Signs. Yes, never even open. Shrink Ramp, still on it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so I, I can't really give my opinion on this one. Uh, oh, and I forgot. Someone's going to say to do a walkthrough on Sonic Colors. I can't do DS games. I should say Sonic Colors for the DS. Can't do them. I also got Sonic Colors for the Wii. This one I didn't open yet either. I'm guessing it's going to be Sonic Unleashed without the Werehog, which is going to be a good thing because the day daytime stages in Sonic Unleashed were pretty much the only good part of the game in my opinion. So I think this is going to be a very good game. It's, as I said before, uh, a game that I haven't opened yet. I only opened those first two. And uh, I might... I was actually thinking about like doing this blind. I, I don't know why because... It's like, Sonic games, for me, I typically go through them in, like, a few hours or so. Sonic games don't last very long with me, so... Uh, this probably because they're, you know, speed-based. You get through the stages pretty quickly. So, I, as I said, go through the Sonic games pretty fast, so I don't expect it to be a very long walkthrough, even if I did it blind. Um, there's something... Oh, one last thing that I got here, it is... It is a STL Triple Plastic Ocarina. This one is in the red and orange. Uh, depending on what kind of light you look at it and how bright that light is, it looks red and, or it looks orange. Like in this light, it should look pretty orange. Or at least it looks orange to me. But if it's in a darker light or a different kind of light, it looks uh, like a really bold, dark red. This thing is pretty dang cool, I have to say. It's... Uh, for those of you who don't know, an ocarina is uh, like the ocarinas from Ocarina of Time. It's a type of flute. Um, normally, uh, flutes are one-chambered, but this is a triple ocarina. So, there, so see these ridges on it? Th these are actually multiple ocarinas in one. So I've actually got three ocarinas in this one thing. So it's uh, it's got also, I think it's three octaves worth of notes. It's pretty dang cool and fun to mess with, I have to say. Um, I'm having a uh, hard time getting used to it, of course, because I just got it. I'm used to my uh, old, old, old Songbird uh, five holes. It's got four holes on the top, one hole on the bottom like that. And, and this one is indeed a, a Zelda one, as you can see by the little Triforce symbol piece. This one is made out of ceramic. The other one's made out of plastic. This one, if you drop uh, on something hard, this one will break. The other one will not. That's part of the reason why I got the plastic one, was because I didn't want to break this one. Even though, at the time that I wanted this one, I wasn't really confident in this one. I had just found this one again. Uh, it's, it's a long story of how I lost this one. And I when I found it, I decided to start getting back into it. But I basically wasn't very confident in uh, uh, getting back into this. And since I knew how breakable it was, I wanted something that was more durable. And, of course, something that had more notes for the future. Uh, if I wanted to play more songs, so I got this one. Uh, I believe this one's got uh, 21 holes, uh, not counting these holes on the bottom, these two holes there, and this one on the side. Those are just tone holes. You don't cover those at all, but basically uh, you cover the holes and uh, you play it like a flute, I guess you could say. the idea? Oh, oh, I forgot a note. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I'm not very good at playing it just yet, obviously, since I just got it yesterday, but it's really, really fun to mess with. And, oh, this also came with it as well. It's uh, the fingerings for it. I already, I only got the uh, the first the first scale, which are, which are on the top here, down, basically. That's what I just played there, the basic scale. It's pretty intuitive, really. That's also why I got this as opposed to the as opposed to this because the fingering on a four hole ocarina is 
a little bit trickier than on uh, uh, like a 12 hole or 11 hole because like you would think that this is, this is like an expert ocarina because it has these multiple chambers. Well, it, it kind of is, but it, but you can play just one of those three ocarinas. Like you can see at the fipple holes here, there's three holes here. Well. Uh, I, I'm only going to be working on this large chamber first, and then working my way down as I get better at this chamber, basically. So, this one can be used as a beginner if you just, you know, break it down as you go. Anyway, for this one here, the fingering is really... It, it's not intuitive, but you can get used to it. Um, it's, it's basically a beginner's ocarina. Um, it's got the, uh, holes of different sizes. Well, they're all in the same chamber, so... As you uh, cover them in different combinations, you produce different notes. And I'll just uh, play the scale on it real quick. Yeah, something like that. So, and as you've seen, I was like uh, moving my moving my fingers like in cross patterns and stuff like that, rather than moving them in uh, a straight intuitive line like I was just lifting um, one finger up after the other on this one while the other one I had to uh, keep flip-flopping fingers back and forth like to uh, play the lowest note you would cover all four holes on the bottom and I mean all four holes on the top excuse me and keep your thumb hole on the bottom at all times and for the next note you would lift up this finger then switch these fingers for the next higher note lift this finger for the next high I mean for the next higher note then this uh, I should have it like this for the camera and then like this then switch these then pull this off and then your thumb and I'll the, uh, basically the lower the note the more I mean the more holes you cover the lower the note will be and the less holes you cover the higher note it'll be and that's basically all the stuff I got for Christmas oh um I forgot to mention another reason why it's hard to play a four hole uh, at times is because you in order to produce to, to, to produce sharps and flats you have to like half cover holes like in order to produce a C sharp I think uh, you would have to like uncover this tiny tiny hole just halfway with your finger and the same goes with D sharp but with both fingers on both these holes and that's really hard to do considering that my fingers are really really large as opposed to the hole I mean look at my pinky size compared to the hole itself but uh, that's really all that uh, I got for Christmas here uh, that's really all I got for a special Christmas video as well I hope you got whatever you wanted as well uh, if you'd like you could say what you wanted in I mean <laughs> excuse me which well I guess you could say what you wanted and uh, what you got down in the comments below or post a video response whatever and uh, that's about it for this video uh, as i said hope you have a merry christmas and i'll see you later